Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to talk about the states of matter. Now, this will be something you have met before, so we're going to go into a bit more detail. But first, of course, we're going to recap. So you should know that the three states of matter are, of course, solids. So the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state, which we can just call the gas state. Let's just move that, make it a bit more even. There we go. So we have the solids, the liquids, and the gases, and they each have their own unique properties. And importantly, we can allow the conversion between the three of the states. Now, the first one we're going to look at, let's see a different color. So solid can turn into a liquid, and that is by the process known as melting. Melting. So melting requires heat. And so if we add heat, we can get um, a solid substance melting into a liquid. Depending on the substance, this will happen at a variety of different temperatures. Okay, now the inverse is of course the liquid turning into a solid. And this is known as freezing freezing. So the most common one, of course, is when you put water at zero degrees Celsius, it will freeze and turn into ice. Okay, so I'm just going to put the other arrows in, because we can go from a liquid to a gas, and we can go from a solid to a gas. Now the red arrows mean requiring heat, and the blue arrows mean that they require you to cool them back down. So a liquid turning into a gas is what we are doing in a kettle when we boil the kettle, and so we call that boiling. You may also see that as vaporizing or vaporization, but boiling is absolutely fine. Now when a gas turns into a liquid, most common example really is when you have water droplets appearing on your windows. Uh, and that is known as condensation. So condensation. The reason that happens is because in the air, the water vapor is traveling around as a gas. When it hits the window, the window is going to be cooler than the air. And so that means that condensation will form on the window because the water vapor has been cooled down and so it condenses. If the window was really hot, then this wouldn't happen. And so often when you see condensation, it's when, for example, you might put the heating on in your car. So inside a car, you put the heating on. That means that the air inside the car is going to be really, really warm. But the windows take ages to heat up. And so they're still cold. And they're also, of course, being cooled down by the outside. And so we'll get condensation. Okay, the last two I've left because they are really rare. We don't really see them that often, but we can go from a solid straight to a gas. And the most common example of that is when we heat up dry ice. Now, dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide, of course, it likes to be a gas at room temperature. So if we allow the temperature to be increased, dry ice immediately skips the liquid stage and goes straight into the gas phase. Okay, and that is what is known as sublimation. Sublimation. So the carbon dioxide sublimes via the process of sublimation. Okay, now the other way around, solid to a gas is even rarer. Um, you will get away with calling that condensation as well because it is very similar to condensation. The correct term is deposition but you don't need to know this one for your exam so you don't need to know that it's deposition that is correct condensation will be fine one example is if you think when it's really cold you might go outside and either your car or your parents car has frost on it and that frost has come from water vapor in the air and so water vapor in the air is a gas and because it's so cold on the window, it turns immediately into a solid and skips the liquid phase. So going from a gas to a solid is condensation or deposition. 
Okay, so now we're going to have a look at why solids, liquids and gases look like and behave like they do in real life. And this is down to something known as the kinetic theory. The kinetic There we go, kinetic theory. Okay, and basically this is describing the movement of atoms or molecules. It depends on what your substance is. And so we collectively refer to them as particles. So we're going to talk about particles here. And remember, a particle is a broad term that can mean atoms, or it can mean molecules, or it can mean ions, etc., etc. Okay, now in a solid, particles are held very tightly together. So particles are held tightly together. And this stops part, uh, solids sorry, from flowing like liquids and gases can. For example, a river will not flow if it's made of a solid. It can move very slowly, but that's something else. If you do geography and you, you know about glaciers, then you know that they can move. So these are in fixed positions. Fixed positions. And the way that they move is they vibrate. Okay, so rather than physically moving away from each other, particles will vibrate. Okay, now how about a liquid? So liquids. The particles are pretty close to each other. So particles are close. But the big difference here is that they can move. So they can move freely. They don't just vibrate, they actually move around. And that is why... In a liquid, we will have flow rather than vibrations, okay? They can actually flow. And finally, in a gas, well, in a gas, particles move freely and they move faster than they do in liquids. So this is faster movement. The particles can buzz around quickly and in liquids they can't buzz around as quickly. Now this means that the particles can get further away. So further distance between them. Between. And this explains the massive drop in density. So the density is low because of this. There's a massive distance between the particles which means you've got a lot of empty space, and so it's not very dense. Solids are very dense. Liquids are pretty dense, but not as dense as solids normally. And gases are not very dense at all. Okay, so here's a diagram illustrating that. Your solids are on the left. And so if you think of one of these circles as a particle, they're all locked together, aren't they? So they can't move around independently. If, let's say, for example, this guy starts to move... He can't actually move anywhere, he'll just vibrate back and forwards. And that causes all the others to vibrate back and forwards, but not actually move. Now, in a liquid, you can see that it's still pretty dense here in the liquid. Um, but, because there are these gaps, this guy can actually move into that gap. And then that will open a gap here. And this guy might move there, this guy can then move over here. And so we will have movement, and that's why we have flow in liquids but still pretty dense, and that is why we can see it physically with our eyes, because the particles are so close together. And also, um, for example, a jug of water still weighs quite a lot. Okay, finally you have gases, and you can see drastic change, not very dense at all. These guys are moving very fast, very fast, and in all directions, they don't really care, because they move independently of each other. They're not really bumping into each other very often at all. They will do now and again, but not very often at all. And this, all this empty space shows you that the density has really gone down here as well. So these two, the liquids and the gases, can flow. And we call those fluids. Because they can flow, we call them fluids. A solid is not a fluid, and a solid certainly will not flow. Okay, finally, because of all of this... The solids will have a completely fixed shape. And you know that because 
for example, your mobile phone or a cube of ice, it doesn't really change shape unless you melt it. Um, and so the fixed shape is because the particles can't move. Fluids don't have a fixed shape, but a liquid will fit the container. And that's because if you pour water into a cup, the particles can't move fast enough to escape the bottom of the cup. And so they fit the bottom of the container. If you put gas in there, it will fill the container. So you put a lid on a bottle, inside it there will be air or other gas, doesn't matter, and that gas will move around anywhere in the bottle, so it will fill up the container. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that helped uh, solidify in your mind the difference between solid, liquid and gas, and the kinetic theory, or the particle theory, as it's sometimes called as well, which shows us what's actually going on if we zoom in. Okay, so please do leave me a comment or send me an email via the link if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.